On today's show, we're going to be talking about the all-new Smooth 2 Phone Stabilizer. So the Smooth 2 is a 3-axis handheld gimbal camera mount for smartphones ranging up to 7 inches and thus far I've tried out both my old iPhone 6s Plus and the brand new 7 Plus and both have worked just fine with or without a case. This is a complete package and comes with everything you need including the gimbal itself, a counterweight, a camera protection sticker, micro USB cable and one 18650 lithium ion battery. So the first thing that I want to point out is the fact that this gimbal does have a quarter 20 tap on the bottom of the unit. So if you want to attach it to a tripod, um, you perfectly can do that. And it works with just about everything that I've used and have in my arsenal thus far. Okay, so let's go over some knobs and wheels and buttons. On the left, or rather the right side of the unit, you have a button and a switch. This top button is basically the power button. You hold it down for three seconds, it turns the unit on. Now the switch uh, is mainly for the app itself. It doesn't really do anything if you're not using it in conjunction uh, with the app. So if you don't use the app, it's not gonna matter any. On the front of the gimbal, you have your power indicator light, and then you also have an Xbox One PlayStation 4 style uh, thumbstick here so we can go left right up down and anywhere in between on the left hand side of the unit you only have one thing and that's your micro USB charging port and I have used this port with several different charging options including a USB hub a USB charging bank and that uh, USB charging tripod that I got from photo pro everything worked perfectly so and last but not least on the back of the unit you have your power uh, charging indicator lights. It will be sort of a reddish amber color when the unit is being used and the battery is less than 100% and this will glow blue when it is fully charged. So turning the unit on is as simple as pressing the button, leaving it on for three seconds, and it will auto magically engage the internal motors. and level the phone. In my experience, it did not take a whole lot of um, fiddling to get this right. I do want to say right out of the gate that if you're going to be using a larger style phone, 5.5 inch or so, uh, including the iPhone 7 Plus, the iPhone 6S Plus, you are going to have to use the counterweight in order to pull that weight down. This is These are large phones, so you will have to use it. I, I, I tried it several times to maybe kind of sort of uh, get it to balance itself out, but it just won't. So the first thing I did once I got it all figured out and calibrated, I wanted to get out in the field and test this thing out and I tested it in three different modes. Uh, I tested it with the selfie stick, with the stabilizer and handheld, all with the default Apple camera app. And as you all know, with the default camera app, you cannot turn off image stabilization. And here were my results.
Effectively, the gimbal has three different operating modes. The first mode being the default mode, or as I like to call it, double click mode, because that's how you reset the gimbal, is that the phone is positioned in a way that wherever you're tilting or pointing the gimbal, that's the way the phone is going to be. So if you tilt it down, it will point down. If you tilt the gimbal up, it will point up, left, right, the whole thing. So no matter where you're pointing the gimbal, the phone will follow. So the next mode, as I lovingly call it, one-click mode, is you still have access to the pan and the roll. So the only thing that is locked in this mode is the tilt. So your phone will stay in a very even level position, which effectively makes it much, much easier to uh, stay on target without your phone tilting all the way down or tilting all the way up and uh, moving away from generally ground level action, as I like to call it. Um, you can sort of walk around with the gimbal in sort of a, a flashlight mode, so your roll and your pan will still work just fine, but the tilt stays perfectly in place. So the last mode I want to talk about is locking mode. So once you do two clicks, not a double click, but two clicks, it effectively locks all three axes. Uh, so you're not going to get any pan, you're not going to get any tilt, and you're not going to get any roll with this mode. Uh, you can walk left, you can walk right, and your phone will stay locked onto a certain position. You can even completely and totally rotate yourself around the uh, phone and the gimbal and it will stay completely the same uh, but effectively if you go left or if you go right everything pretty much stays exactly the way you would expect it to you can literally walk around and it will capture you rotating around the rig so as you can see from this clip, this is just sort of my general walking around test and to get off the actual paved pathways so that we could maybe get some uneven terrain, some uh, uneven ground, and just sort of see how the gimbal was actually going to handle some slight bumps and dips and, you know, divots in the ground and stuff like that. I think it handles it relatively well, especially in combination with the uh, optical image stabilization that the iPhone 7 has. Um, I do think that it would probably do just a smidge bit better without optical uh, stabilization turned on, but that's just me. Also, I do think it's important uh, to note that on occasion, if the wind grabbed the phone in just the right way, it would kind of knock the gimbal out of alignment. and. I uh, it's no big deal, but I would have to kind of tap on the phone and kind of bring it back up into alignment. So after I got done doing my walk around test, I decided to see what the wind actually would do to the motors. Okay, so I'm about to do one more test and I'm going to use this magnetic mount, screw it into the bottom of the gimbal and hang it off the side of my car and see how that works. You never know till you try. Oh my God, that was nerve wracking. And I personally think that having the quarter to 20 tap on the bottom of the gimbal is one of its best selling features because you are able to use it as you normally would, but it also provides you with additional functionality. And when you're ready to set it down, you can plop it down on any table and have your very own steady cam selfie stick.
pretty much anywhere, even on a windy day just like today. And speaking of selfie, when you triple tap the joystick button, it swings the gimbal around and puts it into selfie cam mode. With another three taps, you can easily turn right back around. Okay, so the last feature I want to talk about is the app's face tracking feature. So it basically locks on to two eyes, nose, and a mouth, right? So it recognizes the general shape of a face. Um, first thing I want to say right out of the gate is that I have in fact had some problems trying to get the app to talk to the gimbal and get it to sync up properly. Uh, and I also find it a little bit confusing on which mode they want me to click the stick in in order to get it to actually lock onto the face and get it to follow a subject. Other than that, once you finally get that done, you're good. But if you turn your face to the side and you try and walk away, it won't track anymore. But as soon as you bring your face back into frame, it works just fine. But I do find this extremely useful for those that are planning on maybe doing some presentations, perhaps doing some sort of uh, any sort of activity where you don't necessarily always want to be holding on to the gimbal yourself or where you can't hire someone to do any video recording for you. I do think that they've got quite a bit of work left to do in order to make this feature truly solid, but I think once they finally nail this thing down and they update the app and they really uh, work out all the small minute kinks, I think it's going to be pretty awesome. So ultimately, what do I think? Man, I think that they have done a fantastic job on this gimbal. I absolutely love this thing. It uses really regular style batteries, 18650, that go in devices just like my eSig. So uh, there are a lot of things to love about this thing. The uh, aircraft grade aluminum is phenomenal. I love it. Uh, the buttons, the knobs, the joystick, everything is really well made. The fact that the battery can be charged inside the device is amazing. Uh, the motors are fourth generation, so they're extremely good, extremely steady, and very strong. Um, and the fact that it can hold the weight of extremely uh, big flagship phones is another big plus for me because those are the only kinds I really like. I like the cross between a phone and a tablet, so the phablet thing is just all me. So um, I think that if you are looking to get steadier shots, especially with your phone, they're becoming extremely important now, and they're extremely good for photography and videography, I think that it's kind of a no-brainer. So there you have it, and there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed this review video. And if you did, give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't, don't forget to subscribe. At any rate, thanks again for stopping here at the Photo Video Show. I'm your host, Mark Puckett, and I will see you guys again on the next one. Peace.